This is our second video lesson on the crowding out effect of fiscal policy. In our first lesson, we showed how a deficit finance fiscal policy causes an increase in the demand for private loanable funds, driving up interest rates paid by households and firms in the private sector. The increase in private interest rates resulting from the government's intervention in the market for loanable funds leads to a decrease in the quantity of loanable funds demanded by the private sector. In other words, households and firms will consume and spend less due to the higher interest rates resulting from the government's borrowing from the private sector in order to pay for its budget deficit. So the new demand curve on this graph represented the demand for loanable funds with the increase in government spending. Q1 in this graph represents the new level of total investment in the economy, including the increase in government spending. However, Q2 represents the new level of private investment and consumption in the economy resulting from the higher equilibrium interest rates caused by the increased demand for loanable funds. So as we see, there is a crowding out effect represented by the difference between QE, which was the quantity of private investment before the government's need to borrow, and Q2, which is the quantity of private investment following the increase in interest rates resulting from the government's borrowing from the private sector. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about a different way we can interpret the crowding out effect and illustrate its effect on the market for loanable funds. So let's talk about what happens when a government deficit spends. If an economy is experiencing a recession, in other words, the equilibrium level of income is less than the full employment level of income in the economy. This may lead to a need for expansionary fiscal policy. So an expansionary policy may include a decrease in taxes and an increase in government spending, both aimed at increasing aggregate demand in the economy. However, when a government lowers taxes and simultaneously increases its expenditures, this leads to an increase in the government's deficit. Therefore, the government must borrow. Now, how does a government attract lenders in order to finance this increased budget deficit. The way it does this is by offering higher interest rates on government bonds. We've seen this recently in Europe as the Italian government, which is running a persistent budget deficit, has had to raise the interest rate that it offers on its government bonds above 7%. This is evidence that when a government runs a large budget deficit, the interest rate on government bonds must increase. Now, if we think about government bonds, we can, we can identify these as a potential source of savings. These, these are a way that households can save money as an alternative to saving their money in commercial banks. If you recall from our last lesson, the market for loanable funds represents the commercial banks or the private banks in the nation's economy. The supply of loanable funds represents the savings of households in the private banking system and the demand for loanable funds represented the demand for investment from households and firms for the consumption of durable goods and investments in capital and property. If the interest rate on government bonds increases, this will lead to a decrease in the supply of private loanable funds. Why does the supply of funds available in the private banking system decrease when there is a higher interest rate offered on government bonds? households have the choice. Should they save in private commercial banks or should they lend their money to the government? If the government is offering higher interest rates on its debt, this is a signal from households that they should supply more funds to the public sector and less funds to the private sector. Therefore, what could happen in the market for loanable funds is not that the demand for loanable funds will increase, rather the supply of loanable funds available to the private sector might decrease. So if we look at our graph here, an increase in the interest rate on government bonds will incentivize households to save money in government bonds rather than saving money in private banks. This would lead to a decrease in the supply of private loanable funds to SLF with the government's borrowing. So the supply of loanable funds decreases because households will want to lend their money to the government rather than saving it in commercial banks. Of course, now funds available for private investment and consumption are more scarce and the interest rate charged by banks to borrow those scarce funds will increase.
Now we can see that the quantity of funds invested in the private sector will decrease from QE to Q2, hence the crowding out effect. So what's different between this interpretation of the crowding out effect and what we talked about in our last lesson? The only difference is that in the last lesson, we examined the market for loanable funds, looking at the effect that government borrowing has on the demand for loanable funds. The government demands money from the private sector to pay for its budget deficit. Therefore, the interest rate was driven up and private borrowers had to pay a higher interest rate. In this interpretation, we're saying that the increase in government bond interest rates, as we saw here, led to a decrease in the supply of private loanable funds since households seeking the best return for their money are more likely to buy government bonds than they are to put their money in a bank. As the supply of funds available in the banking system decreases, they become more scarce and the interest rate increases from IRE to IR1. So any increase in government spending will be offset or crowded out by the decrease in private consumption and investment resulting from the higher equilibrium interest rate. We'll do one more lesson on crowding out. In the last lesson, we're going to do a bit of evaluation on whether or not the crowding out effect is likely to occur depending on the equilibrium level of income in the country. What we'll see is that during deep recessions, crowding out is less likely to occur due to a number of factors. However, if an economy is producing at or near its full employment level of output, a deficit financed increase in government spending is very likely to lead to crowding out and will therefore be highly ineffective at stimulating the amount of economic activity in the country.